welcome to the It's Time to Sell podcast with your host, Chris Spurvey. Chris is dedicated to mentoring entrepreneurs and sales professionals through the fear of selling so they can confidently bring their product or service to market. Here's your host, Chris Spurvey. Wes, welcome to the It's Time to Sell podcast. I'm grateful for you taking the time. Man, I love talking about selling. <laughs> Fantastic. I love the enthusiasm. And I'm in Newfoundland, as most people would know. Uh, you're on the other side of North America, California. Where, where in California are you from? A little town called Murrieta in between uh, San Diego and Riverside. Ah, nice. I got a visual. Uh, that's fantastic. Is it a beautiful day there? Uh, I don't, you know, let me stick my head out. <laughs> Actually, yeah. So, you know, there's this thing they call it, they call it June gloom down here. Yeah. Uh, and it's on the coast and I'm, I'm a little bit inland. We got a, a little, a small mountain range, more of like some, some tall hills in between us and the ocean. But it, um, it spills over sometimes. So like the mornings are overcast and then it burns off and it's, and it's beautiful. So yeah. It's cool. uh, the blue sky is starting to peak out. Yeah, it's only earlier there for you. Uh, great stuff. Yeah, well, why don't you fill us in? I'm, uh, you know, share with the people listening, uh, you know, who you are, what you're all about, uh, what kind of brought you to where you are loving sales the way you do. Uh, uh, maybe take a couple of minutes and fill us in. Yeah, well, I got into sales full time right out of the Air Force in 97 and um, had a wife, young baby, another baby on the way. And Gave up my commission in the Air Force and jumped in. So um, I didn't. I didn't have time to experiment. You had to put food on the table, um, and so I've always been very uh, practical. You know, I I don't suffer fools, right? Mm. I need things that work, not theory. Mm. Uh, and you know, I've put food on the table now for a family of nine for. Uh, 22 years by being in sales. And, uh, uh, that's fantastic. So when you reflect on your the beginning, uh, did, uh, did you suffer any trials and tribulations, as I'm sure we all do even today as, as uh, we move along? But what were some of the early lessons learned when you dove in and really didn't have a, much of an idea of what you got yourself into? Oh, no, I was perfect. I, I made a million dollars a day every day. <laughs> ever since. So, it's, so really, I, yeah, I, I don't have much to talk about. <laughs> You're a natural. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I know. It's like, are they born or made? You know, and there's a little bit to both, but I, I believe great salespeople uh, are made. Yeah. Um, I think, I think they're made from a, a solid foundation. You know, they're made, maybe the, they have it in their DNA a little bit, but really it's, it's just a desire. Mm. And, you know, my first paid, uh, sales training client was an architect that was leaving his firm and going out on his own. Uh, and he did very well because selling is much more formulaic than people think. I agree. Absolutely. Um, you know, and it took me a while to learn that I was, I ended up in a lawsuit that turned into an arbitration because the company had all the power. But I mean, I was, I was out of work six months after leaving the air force. Right. Uh, on unemployment, you know, um, couldn't get hired because it, it's hard to explain to somebody why you're suing your boss after six months. Uh, and they're, <laughs> they don't want to touch you. Um, so yeah, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of, uh, I got into high tech, uh, in 2000 and right as things were, were topping out. So a lot of restructuring, a lot of layoffs, a lot of, you know, doesn't matter how good you are. If, an, if your clients are going out of business, it's hard to sell them much. I mean, so right. it's, it's, um, it was a mess. It was a mess for a long time. <laughs> yeah, God, 1997. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, you, but you managed to pull through and, and what, you know, when you, when you were going through those trials and tribulations, uh, what was some of the mindsets maybe? How, how did you keep yourself uh, guarded or, or put up a, a block to, you know, uh, not be totally affected by, by some of those down pieces, you know? Yeah, it was... Um a lot of times it was tough, but you know, I, I always, I mean, I, they say, if you're going through hell, don't stop. Hey. <laughs> right. Um, so I always stayed, uh, going to the gym. Right. Yeah. So I, I maintained some level of physical fitness 
Uh, I always went to church, so maintained some level of spiritual fitness. Uh, and I just kept researching, kept learning, kept asking questions. Uh, you know, if something wasn't working, you always hear the story of Edison, you know, I didn't discover the light bulb, you know, I discovered 10,000 ways not to make a light bulb. And <laughs> it sounds really sexy, you know, but most people after their third attempt would be kind of irritated, you know, yes. yeah. uh, like God grant me patience now, uh, yeah. you know, it's like, it's, um, you got to stick with it. You know, are you really in it for the long haul? Uh, mm -hmm. And most people are looking for shortcuts and, you know, people typically overestimate what they can achieve in a year and underestimate what they can achieve in five. Absolutely. You yeah. know, so you got to, you got to know why you're doing what you're doing. You got to see the big picture. Uh, but, you know, it's like, you know, think big, but act small. Right. right? It's the little things that matter. Mm. Um, and you know, when I, when I ended up my second job, I was selling mobile homes in Mobile, Alabama and whoever got into the office first, got the first prospect that came to the store. Okay. And there were only six of us and usually one of us had a day off. So that usually there was only five guys working. Uh, and so, you know, I, I quickly did the math and it's like, if I'm first in, and, and mobile homes is far different than cars, right? I mean, you, you don't, you're not selling hundreds of mobile homes off of a lot in a month. No, you know, you right. Might sell, you might sell 20, okay? And so if I was the first one in, then only six people had to come to the store that day for me to have two sales opportunities, okay? If I was fifth, then that means 10 people had to come in for me to cycle through and get my second opportunity. Well, that's a, that's a 66% increase mm. in, in traffic, right? So I'm like, okay, what do I have to do to be first in the office? Well, I got to get up early. What do I have to do to get up early? I got to go to bed early. <laughs> you know, I got to go to bed early and I have to get good sleep, right? How do you do that? Well, don't eat like, like a pig at night. Yeah. Don't drink a lot of alcohol. That's not, yeah, you picked the words out of my mouth, yeah. You know, so these little things added up, right? So I was always the first one in. Right. Uh, and so that one little thing gave me a 66% advantage mm -hmm. over, over the other sales guys by doing nothing more than showing up early. Right. You know, so you need to understand how, you know, small levers swing or small hinges swing big doors. Yes. Right? Yeah. Great analogy. I like that. Yeah. It's, uh, you, you mentioned about keeping moving uh, yesterday. I think it was yesterday I read, uh, and I'd never thought about it before, but a shark always has to be in forward motion or it suffocates. Yeah. It, uh, and, uh, you know, I think, that, I think that analogy is quite applicable to what you've shared there. Uh, keep moving, you know, and, and it also sounds like you were very much uh, about um, constant learning and learning from the losses and so on and just uh, pivoting around what works and maybe throwing away what doesn't work. Right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, so, so what led you then to decide to begin to help others, uh, you know, and, and maybe and focus on that uh, uh, versus staying in the, in the pure game of say, selling something, uh, you know, uh, or may, and maybe you still do that. And, uh, uh, but right. what, how did you transition? Um, I, I ran across a sales coach uh, and so through a, another guy that was a marketer, uh, and he brought this guy in to, to teach a, a digital or a, a remote program. So okay. back in 05, when I signed up, you know, it was just, it was a 12 week tele course. So no Facebook, no, no private groups, no. you know, no, no zoom video. Um, and it, I mean, it just changed my life. It, um, it gave me a system to work within because I was, I was just a hard worker, you know, didn't always have a lot of structure. And so, uh, the more I started working with him, uh, I realized the, you know, the power of having a good coach Yes. and, and I was always, I was a natural at kind of teaching and explaining, uh, and he was opening up, um, his business to bring in licensed people. Uh, under him. And so uh, I partnered with Steve back then to, um, 
to get started. And, and it was a good thing, good timing, because I was with a startup that was starting to struggle. Um, and so I spent about six months laying the groundwork, and then I got laid off by them. So I just jumped in full time into the sales whisperer. Yeah, that's awesome. I love your brand. It's uh, it's interesting. We have not, we only recently connected on LinkedIn, but uh, uh, I got a feeling, well, we were both likely getting highly active around the same time on LinkedIn. And, and I knew your brand, even though we were never connected. It must have been through mutual uh, uh, acquaintances or whatever on LinkedIn, but, uh, but you have a phenomenal brand. How did you choose the sales whisperer out of curiosity? I was uh, watching the dog whisperer. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's literally, simple. literally, yeah. September first, two thousand six. Uh, I had my laptop on my lap. I think it was a Saturday. I'm like, probably go back and look. Yeah. Um, and I was watching the show, and he said that he he rehabilitates dogs and he trains the owners. Mm. And I thought, you know what? That's what I do. I rehabilitate salespeople and I train sales managers. Yeah, and you help the, and you help the owners of companies. Yeah. And, uh, I bought the name 10 days later, I got an email from somebody saying, Hey, you know, will you sell this domain? And I said, no, I just bought it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. What a story. I bet you tell that. That's a really good story that could relate to a lot of people. I love it. <laughs> but you know, it's just an example as well, right? Of being open, right? Mm -hmm. Open your mind. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and good ideas will come to you if, if you're open and receptive, you know, yeah. I, I was, I was open and receptive and, and it hit, I was like, Oh man, you know, and uh, I emailed Steve and he was like, man, that's a great aim. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's fantastic. I love, and, and it seems like a, a, you know, a part of what you, um, I guess teach and share, uh, is this idea that of mindset, uh, you know, and that a lot of, a lot of what maybe the, the iceberg analogy is, is applicable here. 90% uh, uh, of sales is under the ocean and it's actually the mindset element uh, and the, uh, really the top of the iceberg is the tactics, the process, uh, you know, and all the things you've alluded to so far. Um, Adam, you mentioned earlier that sales uh, and, and you, it was around process and how sales really can be simplified, I suppose, is what I read, what I heard you say. Um, can you break down in a very simple way what you uh, the, the sales process uh, for those listening and and you know like I told you before we hit record uh, entrepreneurs are the ones subject matter experts people who are out there they're not actually they're non sales sellers as Daniel Pink uh, kind of uh, talked about in uh, the Sell is Human um, what is a simplified sales process from your perspective um, it is disqualifying yeah. It's uh, choosing who to lose, mm. uh, you know, understanding you can't help everybody, uh, understanding that a magnet repels just as much as it attracts. Mm. Okay. So, so stop trying to be everything to everyone. Um, understand who you can help, how you can help them. Uh, and then shout that from the rooftop. You know, I always tell people, you know, people don't do business with you for only one of two reasons. Either they haven't heard of you or they have. Mm. All right. So yeah. if you got a bad reputation, then you're in trouble. Um, so assuming your listeners are good people, um, then they just haven't gotten the word out. Yes. And I think there's too much, there's always been too much emphasis on uh, targeting and, and um, you know, trying to get the, in front of the right people. Uh, and sure, with digital media, and, and you can target and segment and custom audiences and Facebook and all that. So you can certainly drill down um, to get in front of what is hopefully the right people. But usually the problem is not traffic. It's not Facebook Lives. It's not your API and PPC and SEM and SEO. <laughs> um, most people typically have a conversion problem. Okay, you don't have a good, clear message. I don't know why I should choose you over anyone else, including doing nothing. And so if you're running around trying to tweak pixels and change buttons from green to orange for split testing, 
but you don't have a good message that converts, you're just wasting time, money, and, and effort. You know, and sometimes it's hard to figure that message out in the beginning. Uh, and it might change over time as well. I mean, you look at companies as big as McDonald's, you know, in the U.S. Army, even Coca-Cola, they change their slogans, their taglines over the years. Yeah. Um, you know, um, IBM doesn't even sell computers anymore. That's right. Okay. McDonald's sells more, more chicken than Kentucky Fried Chicken. Right. So, so things evolve, but, you know, why should I do business with you? If you can't answer that, then you're, all of the marketing, everything you're doing is probably not as effective as it could be. Right. Yeah. Wow. There are a million gems in that uh, three or four minute. Uh, the, I hope uh, my, my virtual assistant, the, you said the reason people buy from you or do not buy from you is that they either don't know you or do know you. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. That's it. There's only two reasons. Yeah. I hope my virtual assistant picks up on that quote and puts it on our quote card. That is <laughs> a, a gym. Um, so when you th tell us about sales whisperer, uh, who is your ideal client? And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe I'll throw it at you. Why should the, uh, the ideal client who's listening hire you? Yeah. And, and it depends on, who my audience is. Yeah. Right. Cause I, I have multiple messages and that's where, so people talk about like having an elevator pitch, yeah. right? I, I have an elevator question, you know? So when I, when I meet people, Oh, hi, what do you do? Oh, I do a lot of things. What do you do? Yes. I right? know. So if they tell me, you know, I'm, a, I'm an event planner, I'm, you know, in charge of HR or whatever, then I might tell them, you know, I, I'm a sales and marketing keynote speaker. Mm, right. You know, right. That, that gets your hungry, horny, and hungover attendee <laughs> to wake up and pay attention and make the need of change uh, that you require from this event. Right? <laughs> hungry, horny, and hungry, hungry, horny, and hungover, is it? <laughs> All right. Well, not, hey, go look at any conference you've ever been to and look in the audience. You're absolutely right. <laughs> they're hungry, they're horny, and or they're hungover. That's it. <laughs> All right, uh, which brings me to another point. If you don't piss someone off by noon, then you're not marketing. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, so so my other, you know, if I'm talking with um, a, a small business or um, even a, mi a mid-sized business, if they are, if they're the owner, if they are the CEO, if they're the VP of sales, uh, and you know, and I ask them what they do. Oh, I'm a VP of sales. Oh, you know, I help. Um, and it, again, it depends on the audience. If I'm at a certain type of conference, then, you know, I help, um, small businesses, you know, automate, integrate, and dominate, um, their sales and marketing through, you know, proper systems and automation. Um, oh, okay. If it's, you know, sales managers, you know, then I, I help you, um, recruit, onboard, motivate, retain, uh, top sales talent. Right. Right. So you got to, you got to be a little bit, um, yeah, um, know, you got to be aware of your surroundings. Exactly. Know who, know who you're talking to. Yeah. I mean, it's just like fishing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes you need an artificial lure. Sometimes you need a cricket. Sometimes you need a worm. Right. You know, depending on what you're going after. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, you, and you brought out the, the point of asking questions, which is a very, probably an over overplayed aspect of sales, you know, in terms of the things you read about listening, oh, yeah. least, well, listening and, versus talking. The, and the caveat there too is, you know, I've done this for a long time. Mm. That wasn't my pitch when I started in 2006. Okay. Just like, just like McDonald's, you know, they just sold hamburgers, French fries, Coke and malt. Right. Okay, when Ray Kroc bought them. Yes. So, so I have the luxury of having a few offerings because I've stuck it out for 13 years. Exactly. Okay. If somebody, if you're listening to this, you're brand new, you better drill down. You know, do you sell hamburgers or do you sell, are you Chick-fil-A, right? You just do chicken. Are you, you know, in and out, just sell hamburgers. Are you McDonald's? You sell breakfast and chicken and you know uh vegan options okay yeah but so in the beginning though you're you got to pick 
You know, you're, you're, you're Chick-fil-A or you're in and out. Right. Get great at that. Uh, and I think people are afraid, afraid of going deep. They're afraid of going all in and failing and people, you know, making a, a joke about them or whatever. No, go, go all in. Mm. Okay. Commit to something and, and it'll work out. Yeah. You, you fail at it. You know, if you're going down a dead end road, I'd rather get to the end quickly. And so I can turn around and get back on track That's to right. kind of meander. Okay. Yeah. You know, but people that we want to use it as a caveat. Oh yeah. I, yeah. That venture didn't work. But, you know, I was, I really couldn't, didn't have the time to really focus on it. And, uh, you know, so they're looking for outs before they even get in. It's like people get married with a prenup. It's like they're, they already got one foot out the door. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, it's like, dude, you can't get to second base with your foot still on first. Yeah. Yeah. Start running. Exactly. And I guess that's where um, you, you alluded to around, you know, if you haven't pissed off uh, somebody by 12 o'clock, you're not marketing. Uh, that's where that kind of plays in. I mean, it, you know, there's a, this idea of creating a polarity within your marketing message, I guess. Right. And, uh, and you know, that's a part of going all in, picking a side and, and uh, going all in on that side until you've just either made, proves it works or proved it doesn't work and you pivot pretty quickly. So you get feedback, right? Yeah, exactly. And it doesn't mean you have to, like, you're not out looking to pick a fight. Right. Right. But you know, if you sell Fords, then proclaim the greatness of Ford. Right. Okay. And your Chevy lovers, your Dodge lovers, your Toyota lovers, they're going to pounce on you. Good. Ford sucked, found on road, dead, blah, blah. Okay, great. <laughs> great. They're not going to buy from you anyway. They're committed. Yeah. All right, but there's always the people in the middle that can be converted, right? There's somebody that has a Chevy and, and it broke or they had a bad experience or whatever, and, and they're open to changing. Mm. And they see you as a passionate person about Fords. You're talking about gas mileage. You're talking about this five-star safety ratings, whatever. Oh, okay. that's interesting. Yeah, I'll give this guy a, a shot. That's right, yeah. You know, and so you're not, you're not beating up Chevy. You're just saying why Ford is great. Right. You give people a reason to believe, right? That's a, uh, yeah, great, great uh, message. So if somebody's listening and they are, um, you know, they, they've come up with an idea, it could be a service, it could be a product. Uh, they're getting some initial feedback that they're onto something, they're excited, they're the owner, uh, you know, the future's looking pretty bright. Um, and now it's time to sell, which is the title of my book. Uh, that's where I kind of, I, it's, it's time to sell. Uh, what would you suggest is, you know, what, what, what should they be focused on for, uh, you know, for the, for a good percentage of their time in, a, in an effort to grow sales? Like, do you have a, uh, what, what's the main ingredient of all of this? Selling. Selling. <laughs> yeah. Getting in front I mean, of a prospect. Yeah. yeah. I mean, posting on social media probably won't, won't move the needle. No. Okay. If you, if you need to make a sale, so, so first of all, let's, you, you got to dial this back. So let's say, let's say your goal is to sell $120,000 this year in your, in your new venture, right? So that's $10,000 a month, right? Yeah. Um, if you divide that by four, that's $2,500 per week. Divide that by five, that's $500 a day. Mm. All right. So let's say uh, to keep things simple that what you sell is a $2,500 item, $2,500 consulting. So you got to make one sale a week and you start backing this up and you go, all right, 50% of the people I give a quote to, they buy from me. So that means you got to give two quotes every single week. Mm. Let's say, 50% of the people that you meet with and do a demo ask for a quote. That means you got to have, you got to meet four people in person and give a demo. All right. Let's say, um, it's, it's the second meeting when they, when they ask for a demo. All right. Then, and 50% of those 
of your first meetings turn into a second meeting for an in-depth demo, all right? Then you got to schedule eight first meetings this week. Let's say half of the people that you speak to agree to a meeting. That means you got to get 16 people on the phone. Mm. But let's say only 10% of the calls you make, you actually reach someone. That means you got to make 160 calls this week. So you divide that by five, all right? So what is that? That's a 30, a uh, little over 30 calls, 32 calls a day, right? To reach yeah. 10 to set the meet. So, so you start backing that up. Now you know what you need to be doing every day. So on top of these calls, now maybe you go to chamber of commerce functions, maybe there's trade shows you can go to and, and you know, jumpstart some things, but what are you gonna do to ensure that you have 10 conversations with qualified prospects every single day. Mm. Okay. Sharing a story on Instagram may not help. Right. Okay. Now there are things you can do through social media to ramp things up, but those, those tend to be a little more advanced. If you're, if you're in the newer stages of your business, you got to get out there and mix it up. Right. You got to talk to people, meet people. All right. And it really is that fundamental, just like anything, you know, if, if you want to lose weight, you know, you're like, okay, I can have 2,500 calories a day. Whoa. Yeah. You know, this, uh, you know, this McDonald's, you know, happy meal has a thousand calories. Uh Oh, do I really want to eat that, <laughs> you know, and by, by monitoring every single bite that you take and then tracking how much you exercise, Wow, look at that. Yeah. Three months, three months later, you know, you hit your weight goals. So, yeah, know the, numbers, what you're, the numbers don't lie. Yep. Know what you're going to do every 15 minutes of the day. Yeah. Yeah, that's a fantastic uh, message. And, uh, you know, understanding your ratios, uh, you know, and, and looking for ways to improve those ratios. But the only way you're going to improve them is to have raw materials going through it uh, such that you, uh, you know, and those are prospective clients that you talk to and so on. And uh, learning through learning, as you've already alluded to, that you've become very effective at and uh, any anyone who's become very good at selling uh, obviously needs to do that. So uh, that's fantastic. Wes, um, if there, is there any, uh, anything you would like uh, to share that maybe you haven't covered? Uh, I'm sure there's lots because uh, you work with so many clients. Uh, but if there is one nugget that you'd like to share, go ahead. And I'd love for you to share also how people can get to know you and follow you and reach out to you as well if, they, if they'd like to. Yeah. You know, the, the biggest thing, as I got mentioned before, the biggest thing that changed my life was getting the right coach. Yeah. You know, so – Find somebody that you trust. Find somebody that you know speaks your language, that, that pushes you, uh, and stick with them. Mm -hmm. um, stick with them until you outgrow them. All right, maybe maybe one class, maybe one year, you know, maybe a decade. That's right. Um, uh, but quit quit hopping around. You know, drill down until you're great at it, um, and then then decide whether or not you should move, move on. Mm. Right. Chick-fil-A is doing just fine by not offering hamburgers and in, in and out's doing great by not adding chicken. Right. You know, so, so you got to recognize as an entrepreneur, it's easy to get bored with something, you know, chasing these shiny objects, but you need to understand when you get so good at something that it's boring, that's when, really the breakthroughs are going to start happening if you focus. Okay. Cause when you're so good that you don't have to think twice about how you do what you do, you can innovate. Okay. If you're truly worried about just every single little thing, like I do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you know, brand new guys come in and they are frozen with fear. Mm. They grab on, they hold with all their might. Some of them even close their eyes. They're not innovating a damn thing. That's right, yeah. Okay. My instructor who's done this for 35 years, he can experiment. He can shift and, and adjust and adapt on literally on the fly and literally invent new moves during the process. Right. Okay. Because, but every day we warm up with the same fundamental drills. He doesn't, he doesn't change it up. Hey, let's do some 
let's do some one-handed, you know, handstands while juggling, you know, flaming bowling balls with our feet, right? It has nothing to do <laughs> with getting better at jiu-jitsu. Yeah. We do the exact same things. So when you get bored, understand that's when greatness is about to start really yeah. shining forth. Yeah. Uh, so stick with it. Okay. Uh, and have somebody, a neutral third party, yeah. all right. And your mom, your dad, your husband, your wife, they're not neutral. No. Okay. Unless, unless they're experts in the business with you. Okay. And after 23 years, my wife's pretty damn good at selling. She's really better than me, but <laughs> <laughs> she's busy raising kids. So she's not doing training. Yeah. Um, so she has some insight, um, but still, she's not an expert at, at marketing automation and everything else. No. Right. So, so get somebody, you know, a neutral third party that's an expert um, that has no vested interest in the direction you take uh, to give you clear insight into what direction you should take. You know, when you start to get bored or whatever, um, that'll keep you grounded. That'll keep you you know, going in the right direction, you know, keep investing in yourself. You know, if you're in, you know, the computer business, IT business, and you get bored, don't run off and invest in cryptocurrency or CBD or whatever the hottest thing is just because it's hot. Right. Okay. If you can't explain it to a fifth grader, then you don't know it well enough to invest in it. Mm. So keep investing in what you're doing, which is yourself. Right. Okay. Believe in yourself enough. Go take another course, you know, go attend another conference. That's fine. Um, you're, you're better off spending 500 or $5,000, you know, going to a conference or workshop or whatever in your industry than putting that five grand or 50 grand into some harebrained thing that somebody's excited about. And because you're bored mm. and what you're an expert in, you let yourself get sidetracked. Yeah. Don't do that. Outstanding message. Um, cool. So, so what's the best way for people to follow you and get to know more about you? Everything is at the saleswhisper.com. So all my social media is there, my phone number, um, it's contact us. It actually comes to me. You'll get a link to my calendar if you want to talk. Wonderful. Uh, but I'm on, yeah, I'm on every major social media platform. So and I don't have a VA managing that. So if you, yeah. Get a tweet or an Instagram reply. It's coming from me. Okay. You know. That's good to know. So just yeah. reach out. Yeah. Cool. I, I, I know you're quite active on LinkedIn and uh, you add a lot of value there. So I also recommend people who are uh, listening to follow you or friend you or whatever, whatever else things called on LinkedIn. Sure. And uh, yeah, Wes, this has been outstanding. I know uh, I'm going to come on your show in a couple of weeks. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. I think we have a lot to talk about. And uh, this has been an outstanding show. I'm sure people listening have gotten them immense value. You pack a lot of punch in a very short period of time. So I'm very uh, appreciative of that. Hey, thanks for having me. Okay. Have a great one. You too. Thanks for listening to the It's Time to Sell podcast at chrisspurvey.com.